خیلی متشکرم. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Things seem quite different than they did last year and the year before. What will happen, do you think, if President Trump pulls the United States out of the nuclear deal, JCPOA? Well, the JCPOA as a multilateral agreement ratified by the United Nations Security Council, exiting such an agreement would have would carry a high cost for the United States of America, and I do not believe that Americans would be willing to pay such a high cost for something that will be useless for them. It will yield no results for the United States, but at the same time, it will generally decrease and cut away and chip away at international trust placed in the United States of America. What would you do? What, what would Iran do? We will have various options at our disposal vis-a-vis -vis this issue if the United States pulls out of the JCPOA. And there has been quite a, a great deal of thought given to this possible scenario regarding our reaction. And if such a thing were to happen, quite swiftly the world will see Iran's uh, steps and reactions. This action will take place in a matter of a few days. However, given that Mr. Trump's reactions and actions and policies are somewhat unpredictable, we have uh, had long thought and discussions about our reactions. Can I ask you, because I've talked to other Iranian government officials, I've spoken to officials from around the world, what do you think of President Trump's Twitter diplomacy. Do you see a strategy? Do you see policy? Do you see chaos? What, what do you see? Well, in any way, it is a method that uh, Mr. Trump has uh, started. He knows better than anyone. He wishes perhaps to enter into certain announcements actively and be ahead of the media. I don't see it as a problem specifically. However, what he tweets at certain points doesn't seem to be in accordance and in line with other statements from other American officials, and this by its nature causes a certain deal of chaos. You see what's happening between Burma, Myanmar, and Bangladesh. Rakhine State, the Rohingya minority, the Muslims being, being thrown out of Myanmar. What is Iran's position on this? And how dangerous is it in terms of it being yet another cause, yet another Muslim cause for the terrorists to use as an excuse to create more terrorism around the world? Recent developments are fairly unprecedented, under which 400,000 people have been run from their home uh, and their houses set ablaze by the Myanmar security forces, so it is a human tragedy and it is a genocide that is taking place. And I believe that not only Muslims, but all countries from throughout the world must vis-a-vis -vis the Myanmar government and the Myanmar armed forces stand steadfast against their current actions and render great deal of support and aid to the refugees currently entering Bangladesh. Is it a magnet to recruit terrorists? These actions, oppression against people running them from their homes, uh, genocides, always lay the grounds for extremism and violence. And it is possible for terrorists to wish to use such an atmosphere and such a foundation, but it is up to us to not allow them to use these for to use these as uh, tools to draw people as a magnet and certainly once their defeat is ultimately achieved and driven from the Syrian and Iraqi battlefield they will certainly focus elsewhere and it is of great danger not only for us but the rest of the world as well as Europe of course what is your reaction to the leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, with his sixth nuclear test, with his ICBM missile test, with 
sending missiles over Japan, threatening American territory. What is your reaction to what's happening there right now? And he has nuclear weapons. Our position has been very clear and remains clear vis-a-vis -vis nuclear weapons. We are against any type of weapons of mass destruction as well as nuclear weapons and we believe that they must be destroyed throughout the world. So our opinion, our positions are clear, arms races are not acceptable to us in any region and we see that as extremely dangerous. However, from the other side, the positions and the actions of the United States as well as other nations against the North Korean country has not been very positive. And I don't think there is a military solution to this. Only diplomacy is the tool that will resolve this problem permanently. A security advisor to the president of South Korea told me that if the Obama administration had spent one-fifth of the time it spent with you and Iran on North Korea's nuclear program, it may have had some success. It hasn't spent any time, very little time has been spent trying to make a deal with North Korea. In any ways, North Korea was on track of talks and dialogue and those roads were blocked and both sides chose non-dialogue actions. And I think what the Iranian experience shows is a good experience that can be replicated elsewhere and executed elsewhere. But keep in mind, please, that if the United States wishes to withdraw from the JCPOA, why would the North Koreans waste their time in order to sit around the table of dialogue with the United States? Because they will think that perhaps after years of talks and a potential agreement, the next U.S. administration could step over or pull out of the agreement achieved. So the Trump administration, such action, such potential action by the Trump administration will block such potential roads to success in resolution of regional problems around the world. President Trump will make his first address to the United Nations tomorrow, on, on, on Tuesday. He's expected to talk a lot about Iran, as well as North Korea and other issues, but a lot about Iran. What do you expect to hear? And if you were to meet President Trump, what would you say to him? The way in which currently, in which thus far, the U.S. administration has chosen to stand against Iran and the JCPOA has been the wrong one. And the proof has been experienced by previous administrations in the United States. And the conclusion is natural to reach that what the Obama administration did in order to achieve success in this engagement vis-a-vis -vis the JCPOA and Iran drew upon the unsuccessful, unsuccessful experiences of previous administrations. However, the road, the path undertaken today by this U.S. administration is a return to the past, to a distant past that goes all the way back to President Bush number one as well as President Bush the son number two. So these uh, paths have already been traveled upon, they have been unsuccessful and soon that Mr. Trump will see that this was the wrong path that he had chosen. On that note, Mr. President, thank you very much indeed for joining us.